Great. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Design Advisory Panel meeting for uh, January 27th. And just a note that uh, this meeting is live streamed and video recorded for the public. So we'll just start by uh, introduction of late items. Uh, this is for the panel members. Um, at the end of the meeting, I'd like to discuss some meeting dates and um, times and so on. So if you will stay on after after the presentations. Uh, so I'll add that late item to our agenda. So other than that, everybody I'm assuming has already seen the agenda and uh, we have a motion to adopt the agenda with that one addition. Or does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? Okay, so a motion to adopt the uh, agenda. Um, Tony and seconder, Kevin. So our first item is we've got some minutes to um, to uh, approve and has everybody had a chance to read those and is there any corrections to be made okay seeing none can i have a motion to uh, accept the minutes as as presented angela seconder kevin <laughs> great thank you all in favor i forgot the all in favor last time okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> great Okay, well, we've got two presentations tonight. Uh, the first one is one on Hammond Bay Road. And um, oh, I have on my, my information that's going to be introduced by Lisa Brinkman, but I, is that correct, Caleb, or are you doing that one? Okay, I figured she wasn't in the room, so I thought there must be some change. Okay, <laughs> I'll let you go ahead with that then. Tonight's agenda is a uh, development permit 1250. Uh, this is an application for eight residential units in four duplex buildings at 4585 Hammond Bay Road. This is a steeply sloping property that currently contains a single residential dwelling and attached garage, which would be removed for the proposed development. The property is zoned R10 steep slope residential and falls within development permit area 9 and development permit area 5 the steep slope development permit area. Uh, relevant design guidelines are the general DPA guidelines and the steep slope DPA guidelines. No variances have been requested. Um, at this point, the applicant is invited to share his screen. And who's, who's presenting, please? Oh, we can't hear him. Not sure who on our list. Who's on? Um, I was the applicant, um, Patrick with Herald Engineering, but it'll be Ken with Straight Street Design making the uh, architectural portion of the presentation. Okay, great. And then you can go ahead and share your screen then. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Advisory Design Panel. My name is Ken Brault, and I'm with Straight Street Design, and um, walk you through this uh, project of ours. and as we strive to achieve the uh, guidelines in the steep slope. Um, let me just get my screen going here. Share screen. There we go. That's That happens. <laughs> there we go. We got share screen. Try that again. It was, I guess I got to start. There we go. Push, push the wrong one. So there's my site plans on the screen. Everybody can see that? Yeah, we can Bro. see that. Okay, good. Yeah, I just wasn't too sure of a muting. Yeah, so here's our, our architectural site plan. As you can see, um, Heaven Base to the north and Gulf Views to the south. And we have uh, proposing a, a, a access road from the, the northeast corner there sloping up from uh, Hammond Bay and uh, following the terrain as it slopes up to the higher portion of the property on the west side there. And we've terraced each building in here, four buildings with two units each. And uh, as uh, Caleb mentioned, it's a quite a steep slope. I have uh, some pictures here if you want to see them. I'll just see if they'll share up here. There they go. Yeah, so this is a picture of, of from Gulf View looking down at the property. And that's the, the access there, the sidewalk. And that's the proposed buildings uh, that are going to be removed on the property. And from to the 
north of that building it continues down and that's where the proposal pro proposed uh, duplexes will be going and then the next shot here yeah it's not going on. there we go so this is from the other corner of the property uh, at the high end there looking up where we were just viewing from golf view and this is the view down to the property there and this is the adjacent property on the east side there probably the west side i think that's 4600 hammond bay and uh, that's the higher units here there's three-story units go back to the site plan if i can there we go yeah so we've located uh, all the units at the bottom of the property to lessen the impact into the into the site and as i go through the sections you'll see how we terrace them into the lot and then what's happening at the back there there's about 125 feet of uh, the rest of the property left untouched and we're going to be landscaping that and providing some amenity space and as you can see in the middle there between buildings b and c that we are also proposing a, an access from hammond bay ax, uh, driveway there going up to the property through the property and some trails going up to golf view and next is uh, my sections here just to show you the steepness of this lot. There we go. So each, there's a section through each building, um, Hammond Bay on the left hand side, and then our driveway, and then the buildings, as you can see, terraced and, and the terrain going all the way up to Gulf View at the top there on all four buildings. So it's a good, good uh, slope to this lot. And this next section here kind of shows, there we go. There's the front faces of our building and on the side here, there we go. You can see our profile of our building terracing up into the into the property there. And this one here will explain it much better. There we go. So there's the dotted lines of the property, uh, existing property um, profile, I guess. And then you can see how in the bottom floor we have our garage and then the top floors terraced into the lot and then the top floor is terraced back further and allows access to a, a patio that our landscape architect Clark will show you more on that and I just want to share this streetscape here just to show you the scale uh, on the left is 4528 Hammond Bay and uh, it's a two-story house I think it's probably done in in the 60, uh, 80s probably something like that and on the far side on the right side which is the west side is a series of 12, uh, six houses there, six on the low side and six on the high side uh, at 4600 Hammond Bay. And at the back there, three-story buildings on the back portion of that development. And so keeping in scale, um, we're keeping a low profile, three-story building, as I said, nestled into the, the hillside. I'll just share the quick floor plan just to explain how that works as well. So the bottom floor, we've got a garage and then it's the back part there where it says number one number two will be a, a crawl space and, and limit the excavation second floor middle floor has a full height concrete wall at the back as it's dug into the hill and our garage, uh, garages have sun decks in the front and that will be overlooking the the trees there of the adjacent property across the street and then the top floor is our let's just pull that over there there we go Top floor has our three bedrooms, the master bedroom at the back away from Hammond Bay, and it, we all are putting a hallway at the back and providing a, a nice little patio nestled in, in amongst the, the terrain there as well. And uh, I just have to load up another drawing here. So there's our 3D concept there. You can see how it's terracing up the back. And in the back, you can see the, the Patio umbrella, that's uh, our upper deck leading into the, the amenity space from there. And here you can see this has got buildings D and C, I believe it is, and they are offset from each other by about two feet. And they climb up the hill two to four feet, sometimes, yeah, four feet. And sometimes buildings are offset five feet to differentiate between the, the different units. I just want to share with you the colors. There we go, that one there. Yeah, so we've got Hardy Plank on the diagonal there, and that's in 
what is that again? Burlap, burlap brown. And then there's a den on each one in front of each unit. And they'll be differentiated by either hardy plank panels with uh, recessed aluminum trim in Arctic white, or in this case over here, it's, it's shakes with uh, silver bells color. And, and then, you know, the rest of the hardy plank. And we have some stone around the entrances. And then all the picture boards are a little bit heavy uh, with good, good overhangs there. And they are in iron gray. So the trims are all in iron gray. And yeah, that's pretty well all we want to show you there. Um, the roofs are 412 pitch to uh, meet the height restriction because it's such an extreme slope. We, um, the average grade works out to give us an average better to go with a 412 pitch to meet the height restriction. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Um, maybe, oh, let's see here. I just want to. So the big, the big thing about this is the amenity space behind there, um, which behind there you can see there's a, the patio up at the top left-hand corner, and they'll have individual paths and, and amenities to lead up to that amenity space. And I'll maybe I'll hand that off to Clark now to explain the um, landscaping plan. And I'll just load that up for us. Um, yeah, the 16 here, where did it go? Sorry, we're okay. Here we go. There we go. Okay, Clark. Thank you, Ken. Uh, can everybody hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, Starting out on Hammond Road, um, we have a, an elevation change of about oh, 4.5 meters at the steepest point to the, on the west side of the property. And to make up that difference, we thought what we would do is a series of natural rock retaining walls, uh, uh, coupled with some nice uh, deciduous evergreens, deciduous shrubs, and some large deciduous trees to uh, help soften the, the rock walls and to uh, uh, give us a nice elevation change. As we get into our interior road in between the units, what we've done is we've added some landscaping and trees um, to also soften up some of the hardscape that's in that area, but also to give some definition and some separation to the individual driveways of each unit. Now, when we get up, um, in behind the units, each unit will have an individual patio to step out. They step out onto an individual patio that is uh, has perimeter landscaping, not only to define the edge of the patio and to soften it, but to provide privacy for each individual unit and each individual patio. Um, from those patios there, you walk up into a small deck area which is kind of a viewing area maybe to have your morning coffee maybe to take your um, stationary bike up and have a workout in the morning but it's a nice little area for seating and passive recreation just to get up and have a look over top of the rooftops there and have a nice view uh, from the top there and and just to some place to sit and be quiet uh, in the morning hours and it is uh, again separated by uh, landscaping and defined by landscaping and very private little areas to sit or do whatever you want to do in those little areas for viewing. Um, we've defined them, separated them from the amenity space uh, by a nice row of trees. What we've selected is native dogwoods um, to just define it and to give it a separation from the amenity area. Each individual patio up there has a granular path into the amenity area and into a central part of the amenity area, which has a hard surface social gathering area um, that has a trellis where you can have larger social gatherings of barbecue. And in that area there, this, the hard surface area uh, will be uh, surrounded by some um, formal grass. And then beyond the formal grass, we will scarify and reseed the area with um, a 
coastal native flower mix to keep it natural as possible. Um, we've been work, uh, working with an arborist to save as many trees in that area as we can. And I apologize for not having that on my plan, but any tree that's in that area that the arborist deems uh, retainable, we will retain. And in the end, we will probably accent with some more native evergreen trees in that area to keep it even more natural. Along the east and west sides, we have a two meter buffer of native plantings. They're all native plants. Uh, they're natural to the area. It's a two meter buffer. And on the outside of that, um, we will be uh, providing, I believe, a uh, um, six foot solid cedar fence where necessary. We'll be working with the neighbors to make sure that there's a nice separation there in terms of a nice fence. And then on our side, a two meter buffer on each side. We also have a granular path um, that comes down off of Gulf View into that area so you can access from the south as well. And along the south property line, um, we've, we're suggesting a nice wood rail fence that's kind of rustic to give it that natural look. And Ken, if you can just switch over to the cut sheet, um, I can show you a little bit of the ideas of what we're really kind of looking for. Yeah, there you can see sort of the um, the natural rock that we want to use um, with the uh, the natural steps up in between the buildings, uh, where that one main access comes that is accessible to everybody up into the amenity area. Um, we want to use that natural rock and have it look as natural as possible to kind of pull the uh, natural uh, features of the amenity area down into our development. Uh, you can see a picture of the trellis kind of feature that we're looking for uh, around that amenity area. And uh, you can also see it, the uh, picture of the sprit rail fence idea we're looking for um, with sort of a, some of the native grasses in behind it and how that might look from golf view. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I think that's pretty much it from my perspective at this point in time. And uh, I would be more than happy to field any questions from the committee. Okay. Um, you have anybody else presenting? That's it. Yeah. No, that's it. Um, uh, Patrick's here for any other questions too. But I think, uh, and that's that's our presentation. Yes. So, be happy to take any questions or. Yeah. We'll just. Um... I'm not sure what's happening with my screen. I've got a picture of myself on here. <laughs> live, the live stream, maybe. I think Ken, you're still sh uh, screen sharing. Oh, um, oh, there we go. Stop share. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that's better. Thank you. I've never seen that happen before, so I'm not sure. How uh, that I'm still hearing a movie. <laughs> okay. Um, good. Um, so before our panel members um, give their comments, I just wanted to check and see if any of them have any questions for the city staff. No. Okay. All right. Um, so our usual routine is we just go through our panel members and they can give some comments and maybe ask you some questions if they have any. So uh, perhaps we will uh, start with Tony today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, I've made a few notes here, uh, all pretty well complimentary. I think it's an excellent project, a uh, really good uh, uh, opportunity for families, especially with that huge shared backyard. Looks very promising as an amenity, especially for kids. Um, you've uh, designed it obviously very well into the that pretty challenging ski hill of a slope you've got. Mm -hmm. um, I quite liked uh, how you were um, giving individuality to the unit, even though they're attached as duplexes, uh, but the variety of the materials and the colors that you were using, um, uh, the colors were different, but subtly so, uh, so that the whole thing had a pretty harmonious palette, and I, I thought that was quite, quite, uh, quite good. Um, the only comment I would make, uh, this is a question or a suggestion, but um, when you showed the streetscape, uh, the existing uh, houses to the 
right, I guess the west, I think. Anyway, um, they had a couple of gables on them, and um, I, I'm not a huge fan of hip roofs in, in the first place, but uh, th that's just me. I just wondered if whether uh, it wouldn't introduce um, uh, an extra small element of variety unit to unit if you had, say, two or three of the units with a, with a gable roof on the front, uh, and also that would obviously serve to perhaps integrate it a little better with, with its neighbors. It's a small point, but I think it could be fairly meaningful if you wanted to take that yeah, into consideration. Yeah. Um, I think that's all I really have. I, I think generally it's a very well, well done project. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Um, Jason? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the presentation. Uh, very nice. Um, I agree. I think you've you've done uh, a great job on a very difficult sloped site. Uh, it's it's a bit unfortunate you couldn't even densify it further using the other half of the site. But I um, I understand the, the the restrictions on the site, and I think you might have the neighbors using that top half as a bit of a community park. So I hope you're okay with that. But uh, um, might be good make for good neighbors. Um, I, I actually agree with um, one of the recommendations um, from the planners about uh, p potentially thinking of using a flat roof instead of a pitched roof. Um, you, you already have the precedent of multiple kind of horizontal elements on the on the building um, and roofs. And I know it's coming, so I'll preempt it. But if there's ever a chance to do a roof deck, this is this is the, the one because you can access it very easily um, um, from behind with, with almost very little effort. Um, the only other comment I would have to the design uh, and how it uh, reacts to the, the street is maybe consider using more of the, the stone. It's, it's Right now it's used in a very limited capacity around just the entryway, but if it expanded to include um, the, the entire kind of front, uh, that lower tier of the building, it might ground the, the building a bit more. And since there's garage doors there anyway, it's not a significant increase in, in overall area, but it might just help ground the building and tie it into the landscape plan um, maybe a little more seamlessly. Um, that's pretty much all of my comments. I, I had a, a nitpicky thing on the, the section versus the plan, talked about 10 foot or 11 foot height in the, the living rooms and the stairs up into the kitchen. Nitpicky and beyond the scope of this, but just something to, to take a look at and resolve. But otherwise, that those are all of my comments. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jason. Um, Kate. Great, um, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for your presentation tonight. Um, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I think I'll speak more to the landscape, the, um, since I'm the, one of the landscape architects on the panel. Uh, first, I think you've done a great job in making sure your site is um, ha uh, very uh, pedestrian oriented. There's lots of ways to, I think it's great that you've connected the back street to Hammond Bay and that the, that the residents can move through the whole site. And so, and also, that you've preserved that chunk at the back, I guess, because of the slope, but you do have it and utilizing it as a common area. Um, but that said, <laughs> I think you have room for more trees. And this is my comment all the time, but I really do. I think you're going to feel quite exposed there at the back. And, and you may want to look at um, having a little bit more sh dappled light for those residents. Um, I don't know if one tree will be enough, as you're showing. Also, I, it's not clear, I understand that you're going to have the rock walls um, at the base of your driveway um, to mitigate the slope from Hammond Bay up to your driveway. I would like to see the plants really soften those walls. Um, too often we see on Hammond Bay very large rock walls that have not used the plants enough to, to soften and, and it just starts to feel very um, just overwhelming and uh, so I'd encourage you to maybe plant a little bit more there at the bases. I see you have the grass but maybe you can let the plants kind of come out a bit to, to so you have a, a little bit more of a gradual edge and softened edge on those rock walls. Yes and and yeah I once I kind of looked at your plan I see that you are retaining a, a bunch of trees and that's great and, and to integrate the trees you are introducing at the top at the south edge I guess um, with those, um, and then I think that will also help uh, help you integrate with the existing landscape. Um, and I'm sure um, 
Walter, the um, arbor uh, from the city, will comment. But we've been suggested the city I know uh, requests not to use the um, native dogwood, but to use a uh, like Eddie's White Wonder or um, so. I, I noticed you had Cornus natalii, so that will probably pop up once it goes through further review and also cedars that so it seems that we're starting to shy away from planting cedars just because of the the droughts we're experiencing and they're just not doing that well um but but i know i i trust you will um choose trees that you feel will do well on this site and conditions but i just noted just just a note but i think it will come up again for you because that, that the city's sort of been making those suggestions but uh, overall, I think it's a great way of um, introducing a little more density to this lot and and appreciate that the residents will have a nice backyard space. But so thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Kate. Um, Angela. Hello. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you um, for your presentation. Um, nice infill project. Um, uh, challenging lot, of course. And uh, I just had a few comments. Um, I did uh, make that note as well um, in support of the staff comment on the sort of idea of the sloped roof or gabled roof just to be in line uh, um, more with the residents in the area. There's a lot of gabled roofs. Um, and of course, a few shed style roof. So um, that is something that uh, I feel like it would uh, blend into the neighborhood a little better. Um, I did sort of think about, um, you know, the back patio is uncovered um, and the front patios on the, the buildings themselves are uncovered as well. So I, I just, I'm not sure if it's a possibility with the architecture, but I thought there's a little bit of a possibility of a little larger overhang on the front patios. That might be uh, nice for the residents when they want to barbecue in the rain. Um, and then I was thinking um, in the amenity space in the rear, um, it's a great space and um, wondering with through the strata agreement or you know, however you're going to uh, do the legal part of um, ownership, um, if it was a possibility to integrate somehow the, like a community allocation for a community garden area, if the residences chose to do that at some point, if ever, um, just might become a little bit of a contentious issue if some people want a garden and then others don't, but if there's a designated allocated area, that might be a nice option for people. Um, to grow some food if they choose to. And what else? I was just thinking uh, for accessibility um, at the front, this is just a minor suggestion, but if there was an opportunity to put stairs at the furthest point of the, the roadway down to Hammond Bay, um, People might want to just cut through there anyways if they're coming down from headed south on Hammond Bay um, to go all the way down and then up again might be a nice um, way to encourage pedestrian flow. Um, aside from that, um, I was feeling like um, this amenity space in the rear is really awesome and it would be i think highlighted by maybe a, some kind of a lighting plan so i don't know if that was a consideration at any point but um, to have some sort of a lighting plan in there would be nice for um, the residences to to use that space um, in the evening as, as well those are my my comments thank you great thanks angela and uh, Kevin. Thanks, Madam Chair. And uh, thanks, uh, Ken and Clark and Patrick for your presentation. Um, 
uh, obviously a very difficult site. Anytime you're dealing with slopes like this, it's obviously very challenging. I think you've done a very good job with uh, how you've sited um, uh, the building, uh, how you did the driveway, and uh, uh, and most of the uh, comments I have, some of them have been addressed already. Um, one I have with respect to the siting is on the when you show your streetscape, um, I'm not sure if it was Clark or Ken, um, are there going to be any retaining walls on the side of the properties? Yeah, maybe Clark, yeah, want to handle that? Or, yeah, there will be some. Yeah, because the property line changes quite a bit with the, uh, I yeah. think, the way you're removing so much earth on the property, there must be some sort of retaining walls that are going to be needed there. Yeah. Well, the, the adjacent units, the other adjacent properties as well, they've altered the grades. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of grade altering, really, um, in the center and the sides from the from. Uh, so I think it'll it'll it's not as it doesn't follow the natural pro, natural profile anymore. I think that's a good point, and I think uh, we're going to work a lot more closely with our civil engineer to make sure that we have that in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, so mean, you, I, I will add that we, I guess, in, in Ken's site sections through each building, um, kind of that was considered, I guess, because the, the, the building kind of like a, the ground profile kind of tears up, I guess, from the north to the south. Um, mm -hmm. And we did cut sections kind of through that area. So there was, uh, perhaps it wasn't displayed in the drawings, but there was kind of an appreciation, I guess, of the relationship between the existing grading along the property line and then what the grading would be like kind of right next to the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the amount of site sections you provided. I think that really helped to visualize it. But if there is going to be retaining walls on the side, are they going to be like the uh, the large boulder stone, or is it going to be con poured concrete retaining walls? I, I, I myself, as a landscape architect, would prefer the natural stone. But, um, you know, whatever's going to work best there and hold best for us, that's what we will use. And if we go poured in place, um, we'll definitely um, landscape it so that it's not an eyesore or it's not a, an issue with respect to uh, a visual aspect. Okay. Um, yeah, so for, regarding siting, I think you did a really good job. I, I really like uh, Angela's comment about providing stairs coming down uh, along the west corner, front west corner of the property, uh, because a lot of people will be traveling in that direction. Um, uh, the, the pub is in that direction, uh, so uh, instead of walking down the driveway and turning and going, I have a feeling a lot of people will travel through the landscape areas there. So I think that's a very, very good recommendation that I support. Um, uh, regarding uh, Jason's comment about the flat roof, um, as much as I would like to see a flat roof as well, I believe in this zoning. Uh, when you go with a roof slope that's less than a 412 roof pitch, the height restriction gets reduced by approximately nine feet. And so I don't think that would work, Jason, as much as I would like to see it too. But um, I like the hip roof. Uh, and the reason is, I think from the street, uh, with that low pitch roof, uh, I feel that it's probably going to appear like a, a flat roof because because I really like the use of the thick fascia boards because it, it kind of gives it a flat roof feel. And um, even when you look at some of the, the photo renderings that, that you provided, um, uh, I wouldn't want to see any gables on it personally, but if everybody else feels like that, that that's fine. But I just feel that with a, a hip roof, going back away from the street, I think that's going to provide uh, a very nice contemporary look. And uh, so I would like to see other ways to individualize the units, uh, such as using uh, on every unit using a different door color. I think that's one way, one way we've uh, recommended in the past that is very successful. Um, so that's just my comment on, on that, and every, everybody else can decide whether or not they agree or disagree. Um, I like your material choice. I'm glad that you didn't use vinyl on the front. Uh, I like that you used Hardy and, and just carried the vinyl around the other three sides. And as long as they match, I, I like the, the, the three-inch vinyl. I think that, that 
looks better uh, than than wider ones, even though you're using a wider exposure on the front. Um, aside from that, uh, everything else I think is related to the landscape concept. I, uh, Clark, I, I like your that you used a vast tr uh, tree palette, uh, uh, I think, and plant palette for that matter. Um, I agree with Kate regarding the um, uh, more trees. I, I think there's, there might be areas, especially in the, the um, I guess what you're calling the natural areas of the backyard. Uh, these areas can get really dark in the in the winter months i i know the area very well and in the winter months the sun gets lower and they don't get a lot of sun in their backyard so i'd be careful with the type of trees you plant there you might want to not want to use evergreen you might want to use uh, deciduous trees so that the, when the leaves come off the sun can still get down into the yards um i really compliment you on on the um the, uh, the effort that you put into the amenity space in 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 access to it and uh, I think you did a great job with that. Um, so the the fence detail that you show in your in your landscape concept is just going to be along the south property line, and then it's going to be a six foot fence down the sides. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. And uh, yeah, I like your your use of, of stone terracing. I think you did really good with that. And my only only comment is and and. I'm not sure what you can do with, about this, but um, there isn't any street parking, is there, in that on that area? I don't think there will be any street parking, and there's only yeah. one uh, there's only one spot on Unit Eight where there there's a driveway long enough to handle uh, eat just one car. So everything, everyone's yeah. trying to park in the garage, which is very, very, very uncommon these days, and or they're going to be uh, trying to park in the driveways with the bumpers hanging out over the street, uh, over the driveway. And I'm not sure what you can do with that. The buildings could be shifted back. I'm not going to recommend it because I think it's such a steep site that you just can't do it. But uh, that would be my only concern with this project, because I really like the project, would be that um, there's really only one spot on Unit 8 on that east or whatever side that the... Um, there, there's, there's a, you're able to park any sort of vehicle in there. So, I'm not, I, I'm not putting in any sort of recommendation there, but I, I, it's something that you know I just want to put out there just so that I'm sure you're aware of it. But I, <laughs> it's something that nobody parks in the garage anymore, and, and you get people driving these big pickup trucks and everything. And, and uh, I'm not sure what you can do about it, but I, I just want to put that out there. So, but other than that, I have a, a, a really, really nice project here. Um, and uh, well done. So thank you very much. Thank you. I can I can probably speak to that a little bit. Um, there's been some discussion with the um, development engineering group. So perhaps I'll just share my screen real quick, if that's okay. Just maybe to address Kevin's comment, if anyone else had a question about some parking. I think that's a good idea, actually, because I, I thought of that too. <laughs> it looked a little, little tight. Um, so what we have here is, is yeah, correct. The, the, obviously, a little less detail on the units there, but um, so I, I believe we did provide just a couple of guest spaces in and around here by the turnaround. Um, and and I, I know we're not supposed to. I mean, we don't count this as part of required parking, but there was an attempt to. And, and although these details we fleshed out with city staff, there was an attempt to um, basically use the the city's road uh, design standards kind of for this kind of flex space here, whether it be parking. So I guess the flex space would be in and around here and here. Um, there wasn't really an appetite for parking at the west side because it's kind of coming off an intersection with McGuffey. But there was, uh, and perhaps this rolls into the, the opportunity for a staircase there, but there, so there's a chance for some parking here, kind of some street parking for potential guests. Two extra stalls here. And then uh, I think as, as Ken showed, just the two spaces per garage. So you're right, the driveways, I think, um, you know, because it's set so far into the slope, I guess there was a bit of a balance there. If I just jump in, we did we did locate the buildings further into the bank to provide some extra parking, but it just it, it just dug them in deeper and deeper into this because we can only we can only start from a certain level there. So we decided to put some more you know three stalls. I think we have three stalls anyways in addition to the required parking. Yeah, this plan doesn't show the the buildings, but it does show kind of the the terrain. Like I think Ken's drawing showed it much better. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that in there, I guess, about the, the street parking. And although it's not, you know, dedicated for this unit, there is that opportunity for, for guests to park down there. Great, thank you. So are you, uh, that, that's it, Kevin, for you? Okay. And Tyler. Thanks, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks to the applicants for the presentation. Um, not much to add. I would just, uh, I'll just reiterate, um, just based on repeated drivings of Hammond Bay Road, Kate's comments there around how we, how the wall surface is ultimately treated on the Hammond Bay side. There is quite a few examples where I think it, um, not knowing the attentions, but it hasn't been delivered upon in a in a great way. And if uh, and if that can be re corrected through this, you know, for this particular site, I think that would be much appreciated and, and go a long way to making the whole thing uh, have a lot more uh, just sort of curb appeal and look better as it blends into the, uh, the existing context of that. Um, I think everybody's already covered it in great detail, detail. So thank you. Great, thanks, Tyler. I guess it's my turn. Okay. Um, first of all, just comment on the roof that a um, few people, <laughs> I actually kind of like the hip roof. I agree with Kevin. I, I think, you know, looking from below, um, it's it's not going to be as detracting. And I, I was looking at the Google Street Views and looking down from Gulf View, and uh, I think the hip roof actually fits in with the neighborhood because almost all the other roofs are gable or hip roof as well, So uh, rather than a flat roof. So I kind of liked like that, so I'll throw, throw that comment in. But uh, other than that, I think it's a, it's a great project. You've done well with the siting in terms of dealing with a very difficult uh, location. And I really love how you've um, added the outdoor amenity space at the back and really, really highlighted that and made it a special place. And um, so I think that's, that's a really great addition. Um, Thank you. But one of the things I was kind of wondering, and I have a question for you, is um, I was looking at your floor plans and I wondered if you had actually considered putting your primary living space, the kitchen and living room up on the top floor, as opposed to the second floor, because your second floor has very little light because of being dug into that slope. And uh, it just seemed to me that that's the whole highlight of these, these units is that looking at those back patios as opposed to the front. And I don't know if that's possible. Maybe architecturally, it's not possible to do that. Um, should I address that? Do you want sure. me to? Yeah. Um, um... Yeah, I guess it would be more of a marketing. Um, I, um, the cl I've done another house for the client, and what they they requested an, another steep sl slope with it, which was a single lot, a single family lot, was to have bedrooms above. That's what seemed to work, and then uh, so you'd have garage living level in the in the middle floor, and uh, so that's. But we could pursue that, but I think it's a, more of a, a tri you know marketing traditional is to have bedrooms at, at the top of the floor at the end of the day. You know. Yeah, well, I could um, I could see it if you had to, if you had a view on the other like looking out over the ocean the other direction, but you're not really looking at anything but the road, and then it just mm -hmm. seems to me that you know you could have a much much more active space for for the people living in there if they can sort of step out into that outdoor patio and have their barbecues and have their living space and just go downstairs to the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it just seemed, and I'm wondering too, if there's other ways of maybe adding a little bit more light on your sides, um, being duplexes, of course you lose light on one whole wall. And then with being dug into the, into the slope, you're losing, losing a lot of light as well from the back. So just even a few more windows on some of the, on the sides, the, that aren't um, conjoined to the other, to the unit. Yeah, particularly in the middle floor. I think yeah. yeah. You'd have to do a calculation on the, on the final thing there. Yeah. To okay. see what. A suggestion if you know thought might might make a lead more attractive <laughs> units mm -hmm. for people wanting to live there but otherwise uh, a great job important. and thanks for your presentation yeah is there anything we should address any of those questions or just um those would be recommendations that we would uh, uh, well we'll sort go of over i'm just going to discuss with the panel here for a minute we'll just see what um if there's any recommendations that we want to make um after after all our discussions or if they're just comments. <laughs> so I just need to go through here with everybody. Um, okay. I think one of the one of the key comments was around the roof. Uh, do we want to make um, the, something about the roof a recommendation here or leave it as is? To, what, are, what are the panel members opinions on this? Tony? Um, my only comment on the gable roofs 
uh, was in response to my feeling that the uh, overall color palette and material palette uh, is very nice, but I think that it's pretty subtle unit to unit, and I just thought that introducing even two or three gable roofs um, would give a little better distinction. I think uh, Kevin's suggestion of you know, accent colors on front doors, um, you know, that's fine, but that's when you get, you know, pretty close to it. But I think from a distance or across the street or whatever, um, just a little variety in the roofs um, would give a little more distinction beyond the colors and the materials. That's all. So yeah, I certainly wouldn't, like, wouldn't, certainly wouldn't recommend as a condition or anything like that. But uh, I think Kevin's point too is, is right that from a distance, those hip roofs are so shallow uh, that they will look like flat roofs. And um, while it'd be nice to have roof decks, obviously, for the view, um, it's, uh, it's a pretty hefty extra cost to, to build that roof deck and uh, stairs to go up there and so forth. And as to your point, uh, Marie, if I may, um, if the living room was on the top floor, can you imagine hauling groceries up two flights of stairs instead of just one? So uh, I think that's probably why it's a, a more conventional uh, arrangement. But uh, yeah, no, I can I, yeah. I, it's a toss up there because I, I, yeah, I guess it's a way better living space on the top floor. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, um, Kevin. Yeah, I agree with uh, Tony's comment regarding that. I, I would love to see the top floor be living space. If it was just a two-story house, it'd be totally different. And or if they had elevators I installed, uh, then it would it, it would be totally different. Um, obviously, that those amenity spaces aren't going to be, you know, easily accessed. You know, you, they're going to have to be done through exterior stairs, or, or you'd go upstairs and exit through a bedroom, possibly, but. Um, and with respect to the, the roof, um, I think uh, there's already some flat roofs there. And uh, I think the pitch roof and the heavy fascias give it a look that it is a flat roof up top. Uh, and if you look at the one rendering in the package that's from the street view, the, the 3D rendering, you can't see the roof, um, the, the roof up above. So I think it has a look of a, of a contemporary flat roof uh, building. And um, I think it's fine as a hip roof myself. Jason, did you want to weigh in on this? Because you were the one who first brought up the roofs. <laughs> no, I, I certainly wouldn't make it a recommendation or, a, okay. uh, so I, I'm, I'm fine with that. So I do like Tony's idea of, of creating a little bit of differentiation so that it's not so monolithic. Right. So how about, did you want to make a recommendation, consider some variation in, in the roof form to give some individual character to the different unit? Uh, I think we should just put it as a recommendation as to recommend that the applicant look at methods to individualize the units. And uh, they can look at the roofs, they can work, work with city, city staff, they can look at door color, that they, they can look at even changing um, the colors on some of the units. There's, there's different ways they can do it to make them a little bit more individualized. but. Um, uh, if they want to change the roof, they can change the roof. And uh, if staff uh, agrees, uh, I, I think that's the way we should leave it. I think we should leave it very simple in 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 simple form in the in the recommendation. Thanks. Right. Yep. That's a good catch-all comment. I agree with that. Okay, so consider looking at methods to individualize the units through either roof design, color, or materials. Does that sound fine? Yeah, that sounds good. So one recommendation there. And uh, we had other concerns about, uh, let's see here. So there were some landscaping issues. Um, several people mentioned more trees. Do we want to have a consideration for more trees? And do you want to be spe any specific on those, on those recommendations? Do you want to speak to that, Kate, maybe? Um, I, well, I think there's opportunities in both the front and backs of the the buildings to add more trees. So maybe looking at, um, you know, opportunities to add more trees where, where it's appropriate, and and to help integrate too with the existing trees that will remain. Yeah, I would just jump in on that. And uh, uh, like what I said, that the, the, because of the steepness and the location of the site, uh, as much as I love to recommend evergreen trees. 
uh, I would probably recommend that in the, the rear of the property that they are deciduous trees, uh, just be, just to allow more sun in the in the winter to come down there. Because I know along Lost Lake Road, for example, people that live on the high side of the the street there, and they have all the evergreen tree trees up above them. Their their yard is covered in moss, and and just because they can they don't get any sun down there. So I'm not sure if Kate agrees whether or not we should have that in. It, that any trees added to the rear yard, unless they're over, maybe over at the side of the property, that uh, that they're deciduous trees. Um, I don't think we have to be that specific, or that's my opinion. Um, but they may find, because I, I think some of the existing trees are ever are firs, aren't they? Uh, uh, Clark might know, so they may want to add some conifers to just help integrate but you could use smaller, you don't necessarily have to use a native fir, you could use a smaller tree if, if shade was a concern. Yeah, like a Siberian spruce or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. How about we just leave it open, consider adding more trees where appropriate as, as Kate had mentioned and we've- That sounds good. Ideas and so on, okay. Um, another um, point that came up was the wall on Hammond Bay Road. Um, somebody want to give me a suggestion for, do you want that as a recommendation and suggest a a wording for that um i i think it would be nice I, I think it's okay as a recommendation because of course they can include or not include our recommendation right. um, but yeah to maybe to ensure that the 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 that plants and the wall are integrated or that the mm -hmm. plants are used to help integrate the wall and mitigate the scale of the wall or um i don't know something like that that are using plants to integrate and mitigate the scale or size of the wall from the street view or the height of the wall. Sorry, maybe that's more to the wall. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting it here. So consider using plants to uh, mitigate the height. Yeah, of the retaining walls on Hammond Bay. Uh, and Clark, did you mention that there was there might be opportunities to kind of terrace that wall as well, and maybe that'll work well with what Kate is suggesting? Mm -hmm. But to make sure that plants are included in that whole um, that whole design feature, I would say, yeah, yeah, terrace would be excellent with plants. I guess. To use plants to soften <laughs> and and reduce the height or um, of the wall and t contemplate terracing the wall as well. Or it looks like he may have terraced it already. We anticipate, you know, um, terracing it, but we anticipate like a minimum one meter between the walls. Mm -hmm. And if we get a good topsoil depth there, that gives us plenty of, to work with to uh, establish some nice plants. Okay, so consider using plants to soften, soften and reduce the height of the retaining walls on Hammond Bay Road. Sure. Okay. And uh, there was also a suggestion of a staircase that was it is it the north end? What what side were we talking about there at the north end of the property down to from from the end yeah. of the drive aisle down to Hammond Bay Road? Yeah, it was to recommend and uh, Angela's comment was to recommend adding a steps or a stair down from the northwest corner of the site down to the street. Is that correct, An An Angela? Yes. Yes, to just um, um, increase accessibility, walkability. Okay, so consider uh, a staircase from the northwest corner of the site to Hammond Bay Road to increase pedestrian accessibility. Okay, um, are there any more recommendations that you guys consider here? My notes. Hey, Marie. Hmm? Yeah, Tony. Oh, um, I, I can't remember if the word was used, but uh, the word accessibility has been used. And it's a very steep site, particularly if you got um, access from roads on, at both ends of it, north and south. 
And rather than go the expense of building a stair at that north end, as we've just discussed, which we can certainly recommend, not on a problem with that, but it is a, going to be an expensive item. Uh, I wonder if the, the subject of accessibility for you know people with mobility challenges, wheelchairs, baby buggies, that kind of thing, uh, anywhere through the site from top to bottom, or you know, has has it been considered um, at all? Because a very steep site. I mean, that's an obvious impediment to to, to certain you know, members of the population and the potential limitation of, of who can actually live here. Just a thought. Well, we could make a more general recommendation of just consider more ways to uh, make the pedestrian accesses through the site and to the site more accessible. Does that affect, or do we want to get into that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just making an observation here. Yeah, and, uh, no, I agree I, with you. Yeah, if, if, it's, a, if it's others, a tricky site. Yeah, if others agree, you know, that. Um, the applicant consider making the site more universally accessible, something like that. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, Tony. I, I think I, the applicant has heard uh, our comments regarding the stair in the northwest corner, and city staff has heard it, so it'll be on on record. And I think if we do make it more along the lines of what you're saying, that uh, the, that we recommend that the applicant look at waiting, looking at making the site more accessible. Yeah. I think would address uh, everything. Yeah, because um, most building codes and zonings don't require any level of accessibility whatsoever in townhouses simply because it's founded on stairs and the living room is usually up a flight of stairs. Um, here we have an opportunity perhaps of getting into the unit uh, from a level that doesn't require stairs. And I guess you'd have to come in below grade at the back. I, I don't think it'll work. So. I don't think anybody in a wheelchair or baby buggy is getting in and out of any of these units. Unless they uh, want to put in elevators, I think. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's so a tough spot. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just being a little idealistic here, and uh, I, I just don't think this site makes accessibility possible. Can put so in a, I'll, 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 sh I'll shut up now. <laughs> can I can I just inquire to the? So these are noted as recommendations, yeah. um, which certainly we'll consider. But if they become um, if they become kind of through further design or what have you to the point where where they're just not we're not able to achieve them is that something we could just discuss further with city staff then yes these are things that you would work through with the city staff we, we put them as as recommendations and they end up in our minutes and uh that's something you'll you'll work through with them okay thank you yeah. i don't marie i don't think that i don't think we the site can be made accessible i don't think so either not no so i don't not. think it's maybe it's not a a worthwhile recommendation. <laughs> well, no, I think Tony's no. point, at least of rolling the stroller, the, the kid in the stroller off the hill, uh, but I think we can already do that on the driveway. So. I, I think in making my uh, my, my point, uh, I think I just talked myself out of it. So <laughs> okay, let's leave that one. Do we want to leave in a recommendation for consider a stair, then consider a staircase at the northwest corner of the site to Hammond Bay Road to increase pedestrian access? That's good. Everybody's okay with that one. Okay. We'll leave the rest up to the stroller pushing somewhere else. Okay. And then Angela, you mentioned um, possibly um, considering a, some sort of weather protection over the bel over the, the balconies on the second floor, or the decks on the second floor. Would you like to? Would you want uh, that recommendation? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it needs to be a recommendation it could just be in line with um the other recommendation of individualizing the units and uh adding you know maybe maybe some of those units could have that feature and maybe leave it up to the the designer to integrate that idea into the it's a suggestion then okay yeah Great. i believe the overhangs are three feet is that right ken over the Sorry, over those, sorry, last night, it broke up a bit there. What was it? Uh, the the overhangs over the the balconies appear to be approximately <laughs> three. They're they're longer than. The yeah, they're, side. they're that's the thing about you, Kevin. You're good for details. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. on my I think it's on it shows up in my exterior elevations or sections that there actually is a three. I think it's a four. There's a there's a two foot overhang around all the parts, but there is a four foot hang overhang just 
over the the deck that's over the garage that is accessible off the uh, great room. Yeah. So I, I don't know which panel member it was. Um, Angela, was it that recommended that? So it, it, it is there, but it is four feet. Um, engineering wise, we could probably make it six feet even, which would, would be even nicer. <laughs> Okay, so well, that's, that's possible. We'll leave that as a discussion point that we put out there for you and Thanks. We'll make okay. it a formal recommendation then. So um, what I'm seeing here then is we've got four recommendations. Uh, consider looking at methods to individualize the units through roof, color, or materials. Consider adding more trees where appropriate. Consider using plants to soften and reduce the height of the retaining walls on Hammond Bay Road. And consider adding a staircase from the northwest corner of the site to Hammond Bay Road to increase pedestrian access. So um, is that good? Everybody's happy with that? Okay. Can I have a motion to, uh, oh, sorry, Kevin? Sorry, I just. Uh, Angela, <laughs> we got two here. Angela, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, thank you. Um, I just uh, had mentioned the, the idea of, uh, and I was supporting staff on the comment about the lighting scheme. Oh, okay. um, so I just wanted to reiterate that, that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a recommendation, but supporting staff in, uh, in the idea of lighting scheme. And I, I, I can't remember if staff had um, suggested more of a, a lighting scheme presented for the, just the front along the roadway, but um, just a note that it would be nice to see some sort of lighting plan for the, the rear amenity space as well. You consider a lighting plan for the rear amenity, rear amenity space. <laughs> yeah, if I can just jump in um, and ask Caleb, uh, I believe lighting plans are are they required? Even though they don't present them to us, are they required before the development permit is issued? Go ahead, Cable. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, uh, through the chair, yes. Um, lighting is often a part of uh, the uh, landscape and site plan. Um, we do have design guidelines that speak to um, uh, site lighting and landscape lighting. So that is a, that is a component of a development permit consideration. So does that mean we need, don't need to leave, put it in as a recommendation then, Kevin? Oh, well, all I would say is a lot of times we've requested it in the past and we wanted to see it. And uh, over time, uh, we found out that the city staff started making it part of the, the process that they, they needed to eventually provide it. Obviously, like, like last meeting uh, with the, that one project that we saw when they provided a, a lighting plan and, and the extent they went with it, obviously we would like to see it, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's a requirement, so. Um, so this we is want yeah, sorry, Kate. Sorry, sorry, Marie. This is Kate. I just wanted to say, based on my experience, yes, I think the city wants to see that you have included lighting and lighting is part of the proposal so that there is something that the development is held accountable, but we don't need a full lighting plan with schedule lights. Um, and generally speaking, from the designer point of view, there's usually not time. <laughs> We are usually not given time to provide that, so that's why it's often not there. <laughs> so I, you know, like the more we ask at this stage, it changes the whole game a little. So we do have to be considerate of that. All right. So we do. We ask. Do we include another another recommendation? Consider providing uh, providing lighting for the rear amenity space. Do it. As, do it like that. Not a plan, but providing. So that's five, five uh, recommendations then, and there's no vari no request for variances. So can I have a motion to accept the proposal as presented with those five uh, recommendations from somebody? Can I just interject for a quick second, Marie? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I can here. I just um, I went listen to that. Um, there, there's no recommendations of um, of going to the slope roof or. Uh, or a roof deck because that would require or like a flat roof. I just wanted to interject a, a flat roof. My calculation is a flat roof or a roof deck would require a variance. Then you brought up no, a variance. We're not we're not recommending that. We've what we've done is we've we've narrowed we've, we've I, sort of simplified it. Just look at methods to individualize the units through roof, I roof so. I just, color, and materials if you if you can. Okay. 
That's great. I just I just yeah. thought I'd make sure for double check, double check. Thanks, you see. Not Bye. a required. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we have the five recommendations. And Kevin, you had your hand up. Are you going to make the motion, or you got a question? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion unless anybody has any anything else to add. So, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the application as presented with those recommendations. Okay. And do, can I have a seconder? Eight. And all in favor? <laughs> okay, so we're passed. Thank you very much, uh, Ken and Clark and Patrick. Uh, good presentation. Thank, thank, I just want to thank the panel, and uh, it was good to see Kevin again and, and all the positive rec um, remarks. I really appreciate all, and the, and the input was very valuable. Great. Okay. Good to see you. Just one, thank you very wow. much. One quick question for Caleb. Um, what would be a, a typical turnaround time, I guess, for that comprehensive letter, which addresses these comments, perhaps, and, and other comments from the city departments. Conversation would have to be with the file manager um, separately. I'm, I'm not familiar with this file particular. Okay, no, fair enough. I'll reach out to, uh, I think it's, is it Lori? Yeah. Uh, Lisa. Okay, okay we've got to move on to our next, uh, next presentation we have tonight, another one on Bowen Road. And again, Caleb uh, Horn will do the presentation or introduce our presentation. Go ahead, Joyce. You're, um, maybe turn up, can you turn up your volume? Not, I don't hear you that well. Oh. Can you hear me? That's better. Okay. Um, well, thanks everyone for being here. Um, we're excited to present a, what I find to be a very exciting project located at Bowen and Meredith Road. So this uh, three-story over parkade um, apartment building project is at 41 units. Um, if you took a look at the floor plans, you'll notice that uh, the units are conceptually organized around being very uh, much smaller than your typical. And we're trying to service that sort of workforce um, housing here in Nanaimo being located close to the hospital and along the transit line here. Um, so you can see in the bottom corner here, actually, I think I'll scroll to the next screen here. So you can see our project located right here. Our site goes along here and then there's a, a back lane. Um, we've got Bowen Road along this direction and then we've got Meredith here. And our main entrance is located at the corner here. Um, we have wonderful views of the mountains and we also have a, a nice roof deck on the top, which I think will act as a great amenity for the project, um, but also get to take advantage of a lot of those beautiful views. This is the lower level plan. Um, so in terms of the, how the site slopes, we're at the high end over here. Uh, sloping down towards the corner and then sloping even farther down along Meredith Road and then back to the lane. Our parking entrance is down the, you'd access it through the, through the, through the lane. And then our main entrance is up here on the upper level above the parkade at the corner of uh, Meredith and Bowen Road. In the back here, we have a series of surface parking and a loading area where then you would enter into a parkade which sits partially in the ground and partially out. So basically we daylight um, at these corners and then a majority of the build, of the parkade is actually sitting in the ground and would be um, covered by most of the building. 
this is the sort of the more main floor, ground level floor plan along Bowen Road. Um, we have got our residential lobby here. And because of the way the site slopes um, from high to low, uh, and in order to get into the parking garage off the lane, um, the parkade floor is basically at a fixed point. And from there, we, you know, we have meet our clearances and then we set the main residential level. And because of all of these sort of impacts, um, it pushes the residential lobby a bit out of the ground, which is why you'll see the, the stair up and then a very creative uh, ramp to get from the main corner all the way up to the main entrance of the building where the lobby is. And then the rest of the building is actually quite simply laid out. We've got stairs on either ends with a main corridor and um, an elevator and stair, which when we look at the elevations, actually acts as a quite an um, sort of a design feature and corner uh, corner interest on, um, there along the road. I have a couple of quick um, sections just to, I think, give a little bit more of a diagram to how the site works and how the parkade is. So this is up here on Bowen and the lower area along Meredith and the lane. And you can see here, this is where the parkade sits into the ground. And then we've got our three residential levels and then a, a rooftop amenity. I think at this point, I'll switch over to um, the SketchUp model so that you can get a better idea of uh, graphically what the elevations look like. Just wanna make sure everyone can see the SketchUp model it switched. Okay, great. Um, so this uh, this is Bowen Road along here, and then come down and around, and that's Meredith Road there. You can see that there is quite a bit of slope along Bowen Road. So what we've done is set the, the ground floor and integrated in a nice, uh, lots of landscape and fence. I've turned the trees off along Bowen so you can see the architecture a bit better. But we we tried our best to sort of set the building at a height that doesn't push people in the ground too much at this end and doesn't lift the main entrance of the building too far out of the ground at the corner. So in terms of the architecture, in order to create some interest and in scale, um, we we've used this bold architectural line, this dark gray, as a way to carve out different sections of the building and and add a bit of a, uh, some movement along the elevation. So you can see here, we've got it carving out this um, area up here at the front and then used it as a way to sort of carve out this uh, section towards the back and then wrapped it, wrapped it around the building. I think it does a nice job of breaking up what, which otherwise would be a very sort of flat elevation with a lot of the same repetition um, and gives you that sense of like different pieces and components of the actual elevation. And then we've used um, siding and colors as ways to break up or re-emphasize different parts of the elevation along the front here. Um, and as we turn the corner, the elevator and stair get to be an identifying marker, a place to add a, some signage for the building at a little bit different scale and, and really hold the architecture there along the corner. You can see the, the ramp, the attempt, and then Victoria will dive into this a bit more in a minute, but was to integrate that into the landscape, that it becomes sort of a feature and a walking path along this landscape feature on the corner. And then as I rotate around um, the backside, my intention was to integrate the concept of uh, colors and pattern, but simplify it just step it back a bit. Um, we've got a lot going on on the front and on the back where we have the views, we make it um, complementary, but not, not match it exactly. And I think that's about it for the, oh, I guess I'll show you the, uh, the roof deck up here. We've integrated a, an access point and then a nice option for people, uh, an amenity for the project for renters to go up and be social and enjoy the views. Um, at this point, I think I'll turn it over to Victoria. I'm going to slide back to PDF. Hey, Victoria, you're on. Okay, thanks, Joyce. Hi, everyone. Um, 
So yeah, I don't have fancy graphics. Um, here we are. Um, so, so this site right now has some really nice fur on it and also remnant um, fruit trees. It's sort of, and then the rest is blackberries and broom. But the thing is that 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 fur, in, those fur are sort of landmarks of that particular area. And I think the architecture <clears throat> is going to provide that sort of corner piece. But in addition, I've added some, um, some narrow, tame conifers because I don't have space to put our big, Doug fur back. So <clears throat> I've tried, I've tried to um, put in as many trees as I possibly can to to replace that feeling of that corner. So along with the architecture being solid and what Joyce was talking about, there's there's um, trees there to give to replace that landmark fur that's there right now. Um, actually, it's not just one fur. There's a whole bunch, but there's one particular one. Um, so the, the whole idea of the of the plants then a sort of replacement but it's also the whole increasing biodiversity in the city and so putting in as many plants as possible putting in as few hard surfaces as we can get away with while allowing good access for people um, providing a scale for the building um, and so along bowen i'm I'll, I'll just go, there's basically three or four different areas along Bowen. There's the private space, there's hydro lines, there's a busy street. So I've tried to do, uh, yeah, and the whole thing is a kind of based on a whole very tiny woodland edge ecology. I mean, it's a bit far-fetched, but that's really what I'm going for with layering and with uh, a lot of different plants, deciduous, evergreen, and, and try and make it quite um, full, even though we've got this narrow strip. So along Bowen, the idea is if we have to smaller trees, so put something like a Japanese maple and then have shrubs and ground covers and a, um, and a fence and a metal fence with lockable gates to give people that sort of, tr that trying to get that balance between transparency, privacy, and, and also not feeling, um, you know, a scary place for people to hang out. So, um, but I think it'll be, a, yeah. So I think it'll be a nice place for it to be, um, and a bit of relief from the, the from the traffic. And then as you come around, as Joyce said, like the ramp was, it was tricky to try and get this ramp working really nicely at that corner with a nice entrance. And we, um, we, we have more space at the top because I feel like, and we pull the ramp away. So you can approach it through this nice leafy canopy of trees. And then when you get up to the top, there's actually space for a bench. And it's, it's really nice because you're up. So you can look out rather than if you were sitting at the base, you would be below the road. And that's not, that's not that comfortable. We're also struggling with a hydropole right on that corner. So that's another limitation um, by those by the the stairs there so we've got a really nice generous landing people can wheel their bikes up and you go up through trees and it's um it's it'll just feel nice and generous to get into the lobby there and give you this nice overlook at the intersection and then as you come around the corner on meredith we've tried to keep it as full as possible we had that's where we have our stormwater management and we're going to go um use really big boulders and and make it into a kind of I mean, it's a bit far-fetched to say mountain stream, but instead of just a ditch, we're making it into um, a really nice kind of creek-like area. And so as you walk along Meredith, you won't feel overwhelmed by um, the building. You'll have the trees making a nice transitional scale. And also when you're in the, so, and then that'll bit wrap the whole way around. And then when you get, when you're actually looking in the building, you'll look down um, onto, a sort of leafy landscape it also does has the a function of screening the parking lot and so you won't be aware um of the of the parking lot and the lower floors of the building and then um there's a little skinny buffer on the um west west side there um and a, and a fence um and then we'll put we'll put some additional planting around the garbage probably put trellises and climbers as well. And on the roof, yeah, and the rooftop is where um, the amenity will be. We'll put planter boxes and have, um, and one of the problems with providing planter boxes is 
they can look so awful if no one gardens them. So there's always a bit of a balance as to how you do that. And it all depends who lives there. So, but there will be, there will be some areas for gardening on the roof. That's it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I had another sheet. <laughs> so the, this, presumably everybody saw this. So these are just some of the um, details with um, and the lighting and the, the aim was the idea with the lighting, since everybody was talking about the previous presentation was to have um, lighting at the gates along Bowen um, above numbers. And then if an I don't know that we'll need it at the back because I suspect the parking lot will be lit, but we can put some bollards around the parking lot if that's if that's appropriate. But it shows the kind of fencing we're thinking of, the 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 fence down the west buffer and then the metal fence with gates and then the, the type of bias well I've been thinking with big rocks. And there will be a little interpretive sign explaining the function of the landscape that it's not that it, it it's serving to increase biodiversity. It's for pollinators, for filtering water, and all those good things. Thanks. Okay, is that uh, that it then? For me. <laughs> okay. Let's see what our panel has to say. Um, so there's a lot of variances here that we've got to consider. Um, Again, a height variance, front yard setback, flanking side, fence height, refuse enclosure, and parking variance. So I um, think panel members, if you keep those in mind, if you want to make a comment on any of those um, while you're making your comments, and then we can maybe just do a little roundup on variances at the end here when we summarize. Okay, so um, let's get a start here. Uh, Jeremy, would you like to, or sorry, Jason, would you like to start? So I like, put your name yeah. down there. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the presentation. I um, really appreciated it. Um, I, I, I'll have, I have to admit, when I first saw the number of variances being requested, I was a little put off, and then I saw the site plan, and I thought, oh, okay. So <laughs> uh, I'll, just to be succinct about it, I, I actually approve all of the variances. I think you've done an excellent job trying to mitigate uh, a very difficult site with the curvature. Um, I think you've done a nice job um, um, balancing um, privacy and accessibility at the entrance, uh, the, the the ramp. I know you had quite a bit of vertical rise, but I feel like you've done a really nice job in not making it feel that it's a, a secondary entrance. It's part of the natural evolution and progress to the front door. So uh, I think that's really nice. And I think the landing size uh, is also really nice and, and generous and, and makes it feel very welcoming. So um, I really appreciate that as well. Um, I think the material palette that you've shown is, is appropriate for um, um, the, the type of building it is, especially since it's um, very heavily weighted towards studio apartments. And so um, I think that makes um, sense. Um, because of the parking uh, variance, I, I kind of took an extra look at the, the parquet layout. And I, I think you're missing a column by the entry, but it looks like you have enough space to, to make that work. So I'm confident that you can achieve all of the parking stalls that you're, you're looking at. Um, I, I particularly like the, the kind of monument, the architectural feature that will anchor the corner of the, the curve. Um, I think that's really nice. I, I think um, special consideration needs to be taken in terms of lighting um, so that it can really have a, a strong presence and anchor that corner. Um, I think um, that would be really important. Um, uh, and I also really appreciate um, the design of the building tectonically using the frames to help um, break down the scale and the massing of, of the building. And then even the, the, the color palette and the materiality to express kind of the, the consistent variation of the, the, the stepping back of the various planes is, is also a nice thing. So I think the, the, the approach to breaking down the overall form of the building was, was well done. Um, my only other comment would be for the, the roof deck. I think it could be bigger, frankly, um, but but um, that would be my only comments. So thank you very much. Jeremy, or Jer sorry, Jason, why did I got Jeremy in my brain here? Uh, Angela. Well, you look like a Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Angela. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Very. Uh, comprehensive and uh, very thoughtful um, project on a very constrained site. I don't have um, any issues with the variances. I, 
there's a lots of variances, but I feel like they're uh, quite minor in nature, given the complexity of the site and trying to fit this building in, the, in this location. Um, I love the, um, the uh, solution to the corner issue. I think that's going to be a really nice feature that you turn a problem into a beautiful feature there. And um, I think that's going to be a highlight and love the, the color scheme and the, the built form. Um, don't really have much to say aside from, uh, yeah, the roof deck could looks a little tiny comparatively to the, the building overall. And um, I'd love to have Victoria have a, a go at the, the landscaping up there. Um, as you say, the planter boxes can be an issue if nobody's maintaining them. Um, so I don't know, but maybe maybe there could be some um, sort of green roof uh, features added instead that just take care of the, themselves. Um, just a thought. So that was all I had to add. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Uh, Tyler? Thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks for the presentation. Um, Support of all the variances uh, and uh, a great project. Thank you. I'm like straining to find a thing that I can comment on that would be of any meaningful value, and I can't find anything. So, uh, well done. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tyler. And Kevin? Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks, Joyce. And uh, the landscape architect's name is Victoria, is that right? <laughs> Um, yeah, very nice presentation. Um, I know the site quite well. Uh, I remember when they had uh, perched on this site a, a really small portable house that they were trying to market. And uh, I think I might have seen one application over the years for the site that never came to fruition. But um, I think uh, Joyce did a wonderful job citing the building, relating it to the street, especially the corner and how you have the parking accessed from off of Meredith, so you really don't see it. Um, so I think you did a great job there. Uh, form and character, uh, really no issues. I think, like what I said, I think the, the way the building relates to the street and especially the corner, I think you've done a great job. Uh, the only thing, if I, w if I was gonna add anything, and, and this is not gonna be a re recommendation, is it, it would be nice maybe to see some sort of in a very minimal sense, a, a real contrasting color, uh, just in a very minimal sense. But I'm not going to put it in this recommendation. I'm just going to say that because uh, I think that could, might add to, to punching out some of the details that, that you've provided in the building. Um, uh, Victoria, the landscape concept, uh, I love the density of your, your palette and, and uh, how many trees are on the site. Anytime anybody uh, has a Snowbell Styrax in their palette, I jump up and down because I think they're one of the most beautiful trees. I would say only that you've only, you're have only you only providing three of them, and, it, and you're providing, I, I believe, 11 Japanese maples. And if there's any way you can kind of reduce some of the Japanese maples and add some more of the, some of the Snowbell Styrax, uh, I just think they're, they're very beautiful trees that aren't used enough in our city and they do grow very well in our city. Um, Victoria, the, um, I believe all your uh, deciduous trees are pretty much bloom in the spring. Is that correct? I have um, Persian armwoods that go for a full color and um, it's hard to find a tree that is not spring blooming well you helped us with our backyard if you remember <laughs> i do and we planted uh, a persian silk tree and they they start blooming in the summer and this last year the flowers remained well in the fall and the reason why i'm saying that especially and we have it on the our northwest northwest corner so they normally like a lot of sun right and I, all I would say is if, if there's any way you can provide uh, a Persian silk tree in there somewhere, just so that there's some color and, and the leaves stay green pretty much well into October, uh, even later. And uh, if there's any way you can, 
consider that. All I can say is ours is doing fantastic, and it, I would like to see more of them here because I think I think just think they're a beautiful tree. So I, I don't. I'm not going to put that in as a recommendation. I'm just saying that to you as a friend. <laughs> but maybe just consider. In the future, because you, uh, you know, I know your tree tree pellets uh, because I'm doing you for years, and I know you have the 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 ironwood tree is one of your favorites. I know it's it's always in there, and Japanese maples are always in there. But if you, if there is a way that you can put in something that is more of a summer blooming tree, like the silk tree, and and, and with I'm not sure if it's because of global warming or whatever. But over the last few years, every year our tree is doing better and better, and they flower more and it's growing like crazy. So um, that that would be uh, something that I would just say to you as a friend. Um, aside from that, um, I agree with expanding the roof deck. And I know you're probably would be licking your chops to jump in on that and, and, and work your magic up there. So hopefully the, uh, the applicant is uh, considering that because I think uh, there's a lot you can do up there to make it even nicer than than what and I, and I thank uh, Joyce and the applicant for for considering that uh, I fully support the variances I have no issues with that uh, my own last question to you Victoria is the ramp that comes up from the street is it going to have guardrails on it around it yeah. and there, are they going to be like is the surface going to be level with the landscape concept like the lands the softscapes around it or do you know no it'll, no, no I, I think it'll come it'll come um yeah um yeah no it'll be banked up with it yeah yeah it'd be very close to it so the yeah. guard to put in is going to be very minimalistic on, maybe on one side on the low side or do you have to have them on both sides you have to have them, i'm pretty sure you have to have them on both yeah okay yeah, well, hopefully you can keep them very minimal, like not a spindle railing, like it's more of a, a much more open railing that, that isn't as going to take away from your softscapes. Um, but again, that's not a recommendation. I just wanted to ask that question. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much and a very nice presentation. Bye, Victoria. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> hey, thanks, Kevin. Um, maybe we'll move on to Kate so she can, after all that tree talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. Well, <laughs> well, Kevin had made the same recommendation about the same tree to me, so <laughs> on a different project. <laughs> um, no, thank you for your presentation. Um, I don't have much to comment. I have a question and then a, a general glaring comment that is out of your control, and that is the the bot those. Um, PMT boxes and where they're placed. It's just like in the most ridiculous spot. And I, and I, I don't know what we can do about that. But it's like, is, aren't they right there at your entry to your, your accessible ramp? Is that right? Yeah. And I, I, I think I just that this is more of a general comment that we end up having to accommodate these things in spaces like that are just sort of really take away from what the designers are trying to achieve. And anyway, so that just stood out to me and it's, I know it's out of your control, but just a comment. Um, and also Joyce, I'm trying to figure out that you have a elevation along Bowen Road. And so just past the main entry, there's a wall and it looks like you might have some sort of detail on that wall, but you didn't highlight it. And I was just curious about what was going on there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have like a change of texture there. Okay. Um, I think the idea is uh, potential for some public art. Okay. Yeah. That. Yeah. That that really calls for something. Mm -hmm. Like it, it. Your eye. My eye is drawn to that spot. I don't know. Maybe it's because you put a red car there. But <laughs> in your elevation. <laughs> but it's like, oh, I feel like it needs something significance and yeah. that opportunity. If if the the client is able to do that, I think that would be actually a, a nice addition to that entry of your building, and so mm -hmm. that was all. But I I don't have any comments. I think I do agree with everyone that increasing the roof deck would be great amenity, and and and, and bringing some of the landscape up there onto the roof would be great. And um, I of course there's lots of trees, so I'm happy. 
to see that. And I don't have a problem with the tree palette because um, I'm not as showy. I don't like as showy, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> and I think trees, leaves in the fall are equally stunning and beautiful <laughs> as a flower. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, I don't have an issue with that. And, I, and it's lovely to see the density of plants as well and how you've been able to integrate that the, 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 the slope and then also the landscape sort of reflects the slope with your swale and that, and that's really nice. But I, I do, I wish, like, I don't know, question to, to the city, do we have any control over these big PMT boxes? Because in this plan, they're really right there on the corner. And Go ahead and answer that, Caleb, if you'd like. Uh, sure, and yes, uh, to, to my all, all knowledge, the short answer is no, we don't really have any control. <laughs> Yeah, because because we go to all this effort to say make your that like the standout corner and beautiful blah blah and then plunk, especially on a corner like that. Anyway, that's it. Thank you, and I don't have any issue with any of the variances. Okay. Okay. So thanks, Kate. Uh, Tony. Oh, sorry. You seem to be going in reverse order, and I thought Tyler was next, but uh, I guess it's me. Sorry. Um, I, I, I like this project, uh, as does everybody else here, obviously. It's, it's, it's a very nice contemporary, clean, almost a soft kind of design with just an appropriate accent at the corner where it should be. Um, as um, I was going to say Jeremy, as Jason was going through his points, I was going through mine and I was almost ticking them off in the exact order that he had uh, raised them about the architecture and the color and materials and all that kind of stuff. So. I thought that, was, that he covered everything uh, that I was going to say, so I won't repeat it. Um, I have no problem with the variances because um, they are relatively small and they're almost exclusively the result of a, of a challenging site, uh, as I think has been pointed out. I really like the, I, I usually don't comment on landscaping, but this one almost seems lush in comparison to a number of the other projects. In particular, like the bioswale with the rocks and so forth. I always like that kind of kind of thing. It's, it's just such a nice feature to make something that's also useful. And I like the way that um, it, it's a densely planted, particularly as a buffer along uh, Bowen Road for those ground floor units. So I think it's going to be a really nice soft uh, base that will just settle the whole building into this, uh, this important corner quite nicely. So, uh, And the last comment I make is uh, the roof deck. Um, the, the size of the roof deck is limited by the building code, uh, where you can get away with a certain amount of square footage and or occupants uh, with one stair. And I, I don't recall off the top of my head what that limit is, but that's going to be the, the limiting factor there. So, Yeah, thank you. That's it. Great. Thanks, Tony. And yes, thank you very much for a great presentation. And I really don't have anything to add. Um, no problem with the variances and also I just again would recommend a, a larger roof deck <laughs> you know, you've got a lot of suites in there lots of people and there's not really any ground uh, amenity space so I think um, the roof deck would be really important and again if it can be nicely landscaped that's even another bonus um, but all that I think depends on lots of other other questions <laughs> that I don't, I'm not uh, a professional and can't answer but anyway those would be my my comments so yeah, so great, thank you. Um, so then to summarize here um, to the panel, um, I'm not here, I'm only hearing one recommendation, basically uh, consider enlarging the roof deck. Okay, and I and I think it was, everybody was pretty unanim unanimous on the variances. Um, again, I think we all understand how they're based on the particular uh, siting of the building on that property. So that works well. So. Um, are we ready to maybe make a motion to the effect that we accept the um, development plan as presented with the one recommendation about the roof deck? Angela, do you want to make a motion? Um, no, I just uh, wanted to point out um, uh, maybe that we were looking at uh, the possibility of expanding the roof deck, but also um, landscaping, incorporating landscaping and or green roof components to it. Yeah, we can uh, so consider expanding the roof deck and including green components to it. Does that sound appropriate? <laughs> okay, so we'll reword that, reword that recommendation. 
Is that okay with everybody? Okay, good. So are you making the motion then, Angela? Okay, so Angela makes the motion to accept the development plan with that one recommendation and accepting all the variance, variances requested. Um, can I have a seconder? Kevin, all in favor? Tyler, are you voting with us? <laughs> okay, great, good. Pass. I'm, still, I'm, still not, I'm still not clear if my vote counts. No one's ever told me if it does, so I'm just <laughs> oh, always okay. in this like awkward. <laughs> Well, yeah, I like great. to see your hand moving anyway. It tells me you're still there and aware. <laughs> okay, so that's great. Thanks, uh, Joyce and team and Victoria. That's great. Thank you for your presentation. I think we can, uh, if our committee can stay on. We will uh, continue to just um, do a couple of our late business here. Bye, Victoria. Great to see you again. Bye, thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Nice to see you, Kevin. Bye-bye. Thank you. And, and Joyce, too. It's good to see you again, too. Okay, so our two other points of business is just to discuss um, the uh, meeting times. First of all, <clears throat> Lori sent out a note to see how many of you could change your meeting time for February the 10th meeting. And, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, Marie. There seems to be someone named Ken still on. Yeah, he was the architect from oh. the first project. I guess he's allowed to listen in. We're still, <clears throat> we're still in an official meeting, so it's up to him. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Lainey, are you, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so um, I might get you to comment on the February 24th meeting, but uh, <clears throat> first of all, I guess there was the request for February 10th. How many people are okay with changing that meeting time to 4 p.m. so that we can handle three presentations that day? Is everybody, everybody's okay with it? Yes. Okay, I think, I think we're unanimous unless Jill but I don't know if, I think, are we able to go ahead if we have a quorum? Jill's not here to, to um... I, I believe um, Jill may have indicated that she was unavailable for 4 p.m., but uh, that I think we may still have a quorum if we need to go proceed with the earlier start time. Oh, okay, so we can still, we can still move on and she can still join us if she wants at five, does that work or, or not? Yeah, okay. So somebody can let her know then. So um, so February 4th, that's our next meeting then. We will start at 4 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock. And we've got three presentations that day. Now, I wanted to ask too, Lania, are we are allowed to have a little break? <laughs> that's a long, long thing. So maybe between presentations, take a five-minute break or something so people can... I, don't, I just don't know how that works with the recording of the our Zoom recording. So I guess we can just turn off our cameras and... Going to Where is our pizza? We don't pizza Things have changed temporarily, hopefully. Um, certainly, we can look at the breaks. Uh, we are working through a number of new changes uh, for our technology, too. So I know for council meetings, for example, they do have a recess uh, screen. So um, we'll see if we can maybe work that into our abilities as well. So we can explore that, but I, I think absolutely we can accommodate breaks, especially when we're going to go longer. Yeah, I think just, you know, we can fit it in between the presentation or something. That, that would work fine too. Okay. That would be great. And then um, you were all, somebody also told me, or Lori mentioned that February 24th meeting, there's a conflict with a public hearing that probably some of the other staff have to attend. So um, some, uh, you wanted to reschedule. Did you have a suggestion for reschedule date, Lania? Uh, so we could potentially look at either a date afterwards. We have a, a very large number of items going in February to public hearing. They were initially going to go in January. Um, and then just as a precaution, like a lot of other things, COVID bumped that. So we have a public hearing scheduled February 17th with a part two scheduled on the following Thursday, the 24th. Um, we even have a part three potential on March 3rd. Um, but if we don't have any carryover items, and I'm not sure if the time will allow, but if we have enough time to see if there's any carryover, we may be able to suggest March 3rd as an option. Our regular scheduled date would be on March 10th for design panel. So it would mean back-to-back -back meetings, but that, that may be an option or else maybe looking at a different day during the week. Did you want us to decide today or do you want to throw out some dates <laughs> to us as a group after? Certainly, staff could can follow up with some dates and times and, and just 
poll the members and see what works best for you. But it's good, yeah, good to have the heads up. Most of my Thursdays are free. I don't know about anybody else, but they're they're open for that. And, yeah, oh, I got public there. hearings, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm good Thursdays, but every third Thursday, my partner has a board meeting. <laughs> so we tried. <laughs> the first, yeah, do, the moving third. into the first, a first Thursday might be better for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll send some dates and, and times and see what, what works best for everybody. Okay, so that's it. Any more? Any more comments on that? No? Okay, good. So our next meeting then will be uh, February 10th at 4 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. Um, Lori will be reminding us of that and giving us all the information, I'm sure, the week before. Yes, Tyler. I do have one question. Uh, when I first joined the panel, there was a regular calendar uh, thing that had all the meeting details in it. and. Now I always have to go searching for emails. It seems like a minor thing, but sometimes I can't find it. I'm just wondering if we can get back to that regular calendar invitation rather than just the email. Are you mean like the Zoom, the Zoom invitation that sort of came out and we were able to just put it into our calendar right off? Yeah. Yeah, I found it did it for me, but it like I had to go into my calendar and do, I don't know. It did get something. <laughs> I don't know how. But it worked different than the than last year. I don't know why either. Yeah, just, uh, just wondering, yeah, I just have like so many emails, so it's like really hard to find sometimes, so. You look at that as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so if that's it, everybody, uh, you can have a motion to adjourn. Somebody? Tony? Isn't that, that's it. Kevin's seconding. Okay, <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> have a good night. See you guys Bye. next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good time. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.